Welcome everyone and welcome to the Facebook group, the International Brotherhood of Polybonds. I am the founder of the group back in 2012, James P. Madonna. I am also the founder of Progressive Discussions and Mega Life 21 back in 1995. Um, we have been doing no holds barred, uncensored, um, progressive internet talk shows since 1995. Um, I started the Facebook groups in uh, 2012, and um, I'm back. And I want to I want to greet my illustrious co-host and one of my closest friends, the one and only, the Commodore himself. Jeff Zambello. Welcome, Jeff Zambello. Jeff Zambello is here in the house. <laughs> Greetings to Jeff Zambello and to all of the loyal members of the International Brotherhood of Polyvans. Um, I have not done a live Facebook show in a long time. Uh, most of my shows are not done uh, with my iPhone, but the iPhone is convenient if you happen to be on location on the road, which I'm not. But I, as a change of paste, um, not tomato paste or toothpaste, but as a change of paste, I wanted to do it from the iPhone, just for, you know, different scenery, different background. Uh, this show is called Shooting the Shit. It is completely out of control, no rules, no censorship, and the topic of the show is, like you see, um, social media's community standards which are hypocritical and a form of um, corporate fascism uh, really designed to take away your First Amendment freedom of speech rights and to censor people because uh, they're afraid of offending someone. Heaven forbid someone should get offended. Ooh, heaven forbid the spineless pussies these spineless pussies should get offended. Wouldn't that be terrible if their poor little feelings got hurt because they happened to hear the real hard-hitting truth, the reality check, maybe about themselves, maybe, maybe what they hear from my talk shows hit a raw nerve, perhaps. Jeff Zambello says, James P. Madonna, where is the theater mask in the background? That is my studio background when I do shows from my jacked up, custom made supercomputer. That is another section of the uh, Mega Life 21 studio. This happens to be another area in my, um, what I call the, my personal training studio 54 exercise room where the equipment is on the other side of the room. Uh, hold on. While I uh, sip some water filtered from the zero water filtration system, which is superior to Brita, like the commercials say. Ah, uh, now to the topic at hand. Jeff Sambello says, my co-host says, hopefully my texted comments will not get hmm, erased. Well, there's a really good chance they won't, but then again, I read them, so they're, they're on the show. And uh, the show is... Uh, being recorded as well as being live. Uh, there are two people 
uh, watching so far. So, if you are one of them, there's someone else watching. Uh, are my are, are your text messages appearing uh, underneath the live stream screen on the International Brotherhood of Polyvans, Mr. Jeff Zambello? Let me know if your text messages are appearing, because they're sure appearing right now. Okay, which is nice. Now, ice cold spring water. Ice cold spring water? What is the cure for dehydration from training all day in 90 degrees? I can't see the rest of it. Uh, let me see if I could, I could make it appear. It says see more, but eh. Yeah, I can only see, like, the first paragraph. I am on the James P. Madonna page, not... What? Yeah, but wait a minute. I'm going live from the International Brotherhood of Polyvance page. Something strange is going on on uh, old Zuckerberg's Facebook. I, I definitely started the show on the International Brotherhood of Polyvance. This is very strange. <clears throat> so on the group page, my live stream show does not appear. You see, you see, every time I log into Facebook, there isn't a day that goes by where I do not encounter glitches. I think Zuckerberg has low budget or maybe free interns uh, that major in computer programming, a bunch of sniveling snot-nosed punks still in school, so he doesn't have to pay competent computer programmers to run his company. He is the type If you get my drift, I know it looks like Pinocchio. Wait a minute. No. If you get my drift, he is the type to do something like that. To get cheap uh, labor, college interns, young punks, geeks. You ever, you ever see uh, uh, the, a lot of these programmers? They, they really are pencil neck geeks. Some of them have beaks, too, like this. Um, yeah, so we have a problem with social media. Oh, am I appearing on the Polyvon page, Commodore Jeff Zambello? We have a problem in so social media, throughout social media. You must work faster. You must work faster. Yeah, that's what the, the, the Jews in the garment industry used to tell my grandparents after they came over from Sicily and, and they got jobs uh, in New York in, in Hell's Kitchen. And uh, they were, uh, you know, my grandmother was an expert seamstress, and my grandfather worked with her. And they, uh, you must work faster, you must work faster and harder, faster. Yeah, right. Now, aside from Martin Luther King's birthday, all the shows about Dr. Martin Luther King, I noticed that they kept on playing documentaries and shows about the Holocaust, almost like they're trying to upstage the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, if you know what I mean, Jelly Bean, like they're trying to steal his thunder. James, all James notices everything. Nothing gets by me. Nothing. You must work faster, you must work faster. Anyway, getting back to censorship with this hypocritical bullshit known as community standards. It's on Facebook. First it started with Facebook. 
now it's on Twitter, now it's on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, before you know it, it's going to be all over social media. This is very serious, Jeff Sambell, because this in, infringes on our First Amendment rights to freedom of speech, where we cannot debate anyone, uh, we cannot uh, tell, tell an asshole off, we cannot straighten out an asshole scumbag prick. Yes, there are tons of them on social media. Because why? They have keyboard courage. Because if they, if they said what they said to someone's face, they would get their block knocked off. Old-fashioned USDA grade-A knuckle sandwich, like my grandmother used to say, sandwich. They wouldn't dare. Uh, James P. Madonna, today at lunch, I stole all of the shrimp in the fettuccine Alfredo bouillon base. Not bouillon balls, bouillon base. Bouillon balls is when, is when the, uh, the gentlemen, and I'll use that term loosely, do not properly wash their hands in the restaurant or the buffet restroom, and then they touch things around the food, then, then you would call it bully of balls. Oh, Thelma. Keyboard tough guys are like uh, very diminutive short men that get drunk in a bar. We call that liquid courage. Old-fashioned nose job from the shillelagh. Let me get the shillelagh. I miss the good luck shillelagh. Ah, Blackthorn Shillelagh imported, imported from Ireland. Ugh. There we go. The Shillelagh. With the a shamrock of authenticity, as you jabronis can see. All right? Ah, me Shillelagh. Uh, good old-fashioned de-beaking nose job with the old Shillelagh. Can't go wrong. Thank you for reminding me about the good luck shillelagh. But anyway, getting back to censorship, it's no joke, it's no laughing matter. Because when does it end? When does censor censorship end? You can't express yourself, you can't give your honest opinion because you're afraid of, of offending someone and some spineless pussy rats you out to the company, to the social media company? What if the person is uh, dishonest and lacks integrity? What if the person is exploiting others for greed, at a, at a, for profit, making poor, naive uh, neophytes, suckers, making them part with their hard-earned money? What if they're doing something like earning ill-gotten gains? What if they're doing something, and you call them out, and you straighten them out, and, and the little babies with the crying tower, wah, wah, they go and cry to the company, and then you get suspended for seven days, perhaps 14 days, perhaps a whole month, like what happened to my good buddy, the one and only Mick Von Raven, for telling the truth. Him and I have been in and out of social media prison many times. I just got out of Twitter prison for seven days for telling off a Joe Biden troll supporter of the corporate whore, Joe Biden. The touchy-feely Uncle Joe Biden. <clears throat> James P. Madonna says, and I quote, excuse me, while I scratch an itch in the middle of my forehead. Oh, that feels good. It's always good to be able to scratch an itch. That's what I have to say to you spineless crybabies that have to rat out everyone that offends you. And that includes the man-hating feminists out there. Same thing. Oh, poor, poor f f defenseless females uh, playing the gender card because they know that society and the judicial system 
protects them even though they want to be equal. When it comes to making money, they want to be equal. Equal job, equal pay for equal job, if they do it. Now, if you're on a job and, and, and a woman said, with long manicured fingernails says, Excuse me, uh, gen uh, could some gentleman please come over and help me lift the box and place it on the shelf? You want me to do that? But you actually have seniority over me on the jab. You're getting paid a tad bit more money than me. Uh, or you're getting paid the same amount. And you want me to help you do your job? Now that's called a hypocrite. So you have, you have the, the, fem the phony feminist big mouth, as we say in Italian, bocca grande, bocca grande, ratting you out. And then you have people with children that are afraid, uh, you know, that their impressionable little monsters might get affected by your video or by what you're typing. Well, guess what? You're the parent. Get your little fucking monsters away from the social media webpage. Get them away. It's not my problem you have children. Customers from their... Yeah, I guess you're... It's not showing me the whole thing. Customers uh, from their hard-earned money by sending them cracked and... Uh, oh, you're talking about um, a certain individual involved in um, circular torque training who manufactures wooden Indian clubs and Persian meals in, let's say, Portugal, or let's say, northern Portugal. And uh, this man uh, advertises like the gentleman in, uh, in, um, in Idaho, Heidi Ho from Idaho, the guy who says that, I'm a veteran. Yeah, right. Uh, 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 that means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy your product because you're a veteran. He bragging about the high quality of your, your artisan-made, handcrafted merchandise. And then when you receive it, lo and behold, you see cracks in the Persian clubs that you pay top dollar for. You see cracks because the person... What the person really did with their supposed high quality uh, uh, wooden product, what they really did was they glued layers of cheap plywood together and then put it on the lathe and proceeded to manufacture it. It's called deception, right? Deceptive, deceptive advertising, advertising, false advertising. Wooden clubs and Persian meals. Hey, change the format of, of the Palavan group. Well, because the Trojan horse, Zay Ricardo, uh, also Portuguese, now residing in Ireland, who got very upset with me because I did not, I did not want to make the um, International Brotherhood of Palavans group uh, uh, Mr. Mace Man friendly. I did not want to change the format and start lying and promoting all of these steel mace seminars that charge people hundreds of dollars per person, sometimes a thousand dollars, to do what? To swing an American-made steel a, a cannonball at the end of a, of, a, of a hollow metal pole that only really has a few basic moves. That's all it has. But what do they do? Companies like uh, On It and the Mr. Mace Man seminars and the Kelly Calzone, you know, you know, Ms. the feminist, the gun ho feminist, Ms. Calzone. Um, they start adding all of these bullshit exercises to take up the two or three hours of the seminar so they can justify charging people $600, $800, $1,000 a head, like doing things like, look at me, I'm doing the grave digger with the mace. Instead of doing a few basic swings, which the mace or the kettlebell was made for, only, look
Look at me, I'm doing the grave digger. Look at me, I'm doing the ballistic uh, uh, biceps curl by taking the mace and going like this with it. Ah, oh, look at me. And then, you, then they tell a bunch of stories and jokes. Jeff Sambello says, but who gave the Trojan horse to change the format in, in, of the group page? The, the Trojan horse is not a administrator or, or an editor or he has no managerial role in the International Brotherhood of Polygons, none whatsoever. He was sent by someone with a thin mustache, a very tall individual, a, a carnival man with a thin mustache from Southern California. He was sent to, like a lobbyist, like, like a corrupt, corporate lobbyist going to Washington to talk to a senator or congressman. He was sent to take an olive branch and grease it up very heavy with extra virgin olive oil and jam it into my anus and twist it up my rectum to try to get me to change my, my hard-hitting truth format. And yours too, Jeff Sambella. Elbows up, elbows down, and keep your hands together. That is all you need to know about how to swing the mace or the gata. I'll be honest with you. First of all, stop calling a, um, an, an exercise club a club bell or a mace bell. These names are registered trademarks owned by Scott Sonnen, and Torque Athletic. They're not yours to use. Call it a steel mace, or if it's a, um, if it's a, a, a mace made with a wooden handle, which is supposed to be one meter long or longer, the longer the better, or bamboo with a, a stone or concrete uh, weight at the end, okay. Call, that's a gata. Call it a steel mace or a gata. Uh, all mace and gata for exercise. And I'm glad you told me to get the shillelagh because then, you know, it's, it kind of looks like a mace. Um, all mace and gata in the Indian juries, Persian meals, which correctly sh it should be spelled capital M I. LS. And even Indian clubs, they all originate from the weapon mace, which is worldwide, worldwide. Warriors of all cultures utilize the mace as a weapon. And these exercise tools, whether they be clubs or the gata, all originally came from the mace, uh, of w the weapons mace. Now, do they teach the history of Indian clubs, in Indian juries, Persian meals, or the gata when you take a course with on it or you take a Mr. Mace Man course? Do, you, do, do, do they really teach the history and respect the tradition of the founding fathers of circular training? The answer to that is no, they don't. Because they're, they're only interested in making you part with your hard-earned money and taking advantage of you as a sucker, just like an infomercial. High integrity, Jeff Sambello says, high integrity from black belt martial artists who coach circular torque training. Yes, there are people with high integrity that are competent. People like the great William Calvani, whom I, who I am saluting. People like Kashi Azad from Sydney, Australia, an Iranian gentleman who I salute. People like Richard Army McGuire, a legend, who I salute, who is the, the, the one, the first person who taught me about circular training. Uh, people like the great Ken Thiessen, I give a shout out to uh, Grappler um, 
catch wrestler, prof, uh, former professional wrestling star from the, uh, the, the uh, WWE, and now personal trainer extraordinaire in Boca Raton, Florida, and he's also a commercial model and character actor, many appearances on Saturday Night Live and The View, that's right, the one and only Ken Thiessen my good friend. These are competent people that should be booked to do seminars that charge a fee. Not the incompetent uh, carnival snake oil fraudulent barkers, the pitch men out there. They are not competent. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get the, the first one. I, I was talking stone locks from China. Yes, stone, oh no, you're going too fast, buddy. Stone, the stone locks used by the Shaolin monks of China uh, is the father of the Russian kettlebell. The Russian kettlebell is a, is a hundred-year-old invention, but they had to have taken it from the ancient Chinese stone locks, which is a block of granite with a handle. Yes, how tall are you? When, uh, when the great Ken Thiessen uh, posted photos of when he was on Saturday Night Live uh, starring with people like Adam Sandler uh, and others too, um, Mr. Maceman, instead of saying, Wow, I didn't know you were on Saturday Night Live. I'm impressed. Great job. Way to go. Instead of giving him kudos, he only said one thing. How tall are you, Ken? So, in other words, because he's six foot five, that, that's his only advantage. In other words, he, he, he has to be competitive with other men. He can't be equal and give compliments and credit where credit is due. He has to be compet competitive and compete with others. So by, instead of saying something about Ken Thiessen's model, uh, commercial modeling and acting, he, and his other credentials, many other credentials, and accolades, he has to sort of put him down by saying, how tall are you? How tall are you? Uh, who cares? You know, people that are very tall with long, lanky limbs are genetically uh, not, do not have an advantage when it comes to powerlifting and bodybuilding. Did you know that? The, when it comes to science and leverage, long, lanky, Ichabod Crane limbs are not good for, um, I know for a fact, for bodybuilding and powerlifting. So if someone Let's say someone only has their height going for them. And let's say they're only a forklift operator in a warehouse. Then they have nothing to say. Res respect very much Carl Gotch and his protege, Matt Fury, of combat conditioning. Now, Carl, the Iron Sheik... And Carl Gotch are the two individuals that brought circular torque training from the East, from Asia, to the Western Hemisphere, meaning Europe and the United States, to the Americas. And also, Carl Gotch brought it to Japan because he trained many famous uh, professional wrestlers uh, Japanese wrestlers, and he used um, uh, both uh, Kushti, Akara, and, pa and, and Zirkine, which means the house of strength in Persian, and Zirkine training methods to Japan. And if it wasn't f for the Iron Sheik and Karl Gotch, circular torque training would not have been popularized in the West. Now, do these people that do steel mace seminars, 
do they teach their students the history and tradition of circular torque training? No. The answer is no. Do they uh, give um, credit to the founding fathers that paved the way for us today? The answer to that is no. Their only concern, and one of them told me, Mr. Mace Man told me, their only concern uh, with just showing them a bunch of exercises and then taking their money. That's it. The same thing with Kelly Calzone of, uh, let's say, uh, Southeastern Connecticut. You know the state of Connecticut? Yeah, same thing. Trying to get people to part with their money without really teaching them and educating them as to the history of circular torque training, respecting the greats, respecting the founding fathers that paved the way. For those of you that are just viewing the live stream show on Facebook, this is shooting the shit. And we are representing the uh, Facebook group known as the International Brotherhood of Polybonds, which represents old school safe, drug-free, physical fitness, and the martial arts, the martial arts, as well as boxing, nostalgic old-school boxing, and professional wrestling. Not the crap you see now with the WWE, but old-school wrestling, the way it was back in the territory days, as well as catch wrestling, which is grappling, it's a form of a martial art, and all the martial arts. So th this is what we are promoting. But the topic of the show, of course, are is the hypocritical double standards known as censorship, corporate fascist censorship through pleasant words like community standards. They use this. It's like when the corporatists want to, to reduce air pollution, they, they call it the Clean Air Act, or, or if, they want, if they want to pass laws in a state that only favor the employer, corporations, and totally screw over the employees, like it was during the Industrial Revolution, they'll call it the, a right-to-work state. You see, they give it a pleasant name, a pleasant title, but what it really means is the right to fuck over the worker. Well, community standards is a pleasant term for corporate fascist censorship that wants to do away, do away with the First Amendment of the Constitution. The Akara. Using such tools, like that Jeff Zambello mentioned, using such tools as the farmer's hoe, uh, climbing a rope, using the gada, doing uh, bifax and dance, which is the, uh, the, the Hindu push-ups and the Hindu squats. Um, and don't forget, when you add neck bridges, you have what they call the royal court. In Kushti, you got the Bethax and Dance, Hindu squats, Hindu push ups, neck bridges. It's called the Royal Court. It's the foundation. Now, uh, I really, it really pisses me off when I, I am censored. And I'm calling out all of social media. You ever, you ever, you ever see the, the, the CEO of Twitter speak? He's a geek, like Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, this is also when Donald Trump lies a thousand times a day. Pinocchio. So these, these guys are geeks. And the reason, I think the reason why they like to apply corporate fascist censorship is this is an extension, this is like a penile 
extension of the manhood that they never had. Because I knew geeks in grammar school and high school. This guy had a high IQ. And he used to always call the jocks that used to hit the gym and the jocks that were on the football team, the Lodi High School football team and the wrestling team. He used to put them down, calling them stupid and idiots and this. They used to beat the shit out of him and rightfully so, throw his geek ass in the dumpster, upside down. This is an extension of a geek's manhood. When he becomes a success and acquires money and becomes the CEO of a company and starts censoring people on on, on social media. Uh, but every one of them is a geek. As soon as you see them, you know right away. They're pussies. They got smacked around by real alpha men when they were in school. When is Ken Thiessen... Oh, I'm sorry. Jeff Sambello says, When is Ken Thiessen going to go on tour to teach circular torque training? When? When the people that book alternative fitness professionals to do a seminar, when they finally use the brain cells that God gave them and realize who are the competent ones that should be booked to do seminars, that is when people like the great Ken Thiessen or the great William Calvani or, or Richard Army McGuire will get booked. Now, I'm very happy that Kelly Calzone, now I'm starting to get hungry because I keep saying Calzone, when, when she booked Kashi Azad, she was very smart, very intelligent to book the great Kashi Azad, but what pissed me off was, and you know, Jeff Zambello, you're a witness, constantly on the International Brotherhood of Polybons, I posted to all the alternative gym owners in the United States, especially the East Coast, I posted message after message after message, and Kashi Azad saw my posts, my messages, and he agreed with me. The poor man is flying God knows how many hours, let's say 24 or let's say 30 hours from Sydney, Australia to uh, JFK Airport in New York City to go to Connecticut. Right. He's, in, he's in the air flying that long. Why make the poor man do one seminar at Yuri's Gym in southeastern Connecticut only to fly all the way back to Sydney, Australia? Why don't you guys take advantage of the fact that Kashi Azad is in the United States. He's in the Northeast. Book the man in your gym. There's no conflict of interest. You're, you're over the 50 mile radius. Uh, Eric Rialt in Randolph, New Jersey. Book him. Uh, Jeff Butterworth in Boston. Book him. The gym owner in Dover New, Dover, New Hampshire. Book Kashi Azad. Manassas, Virginia. The gym down there. Book him. Uh, let's say Dan, Daniel Ramsey of New Breed Fitness, which I'm still trying to get to join the Palavan group. Book him. Book Kashi Azad. Do, there's uh, alternative gyms in Texas. There's a big one in... Um, in Chicago, that hosted Mr. Maceman. Fly him out to Chicago. Book the great uh, uh, Palavan Kashi Azad. Did they listen to me? No. No one booked him. So what happened? The poor soul had to fly all the way back to Sydney, Australia. And he could have went on tour like Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones. He could have went on tour. Jeff Sambello says, let us send a salute to Jean-Luc Odon for sharing his templates from the great alchemist and herbalist and natural scientist Jean-Luc Odon of southern France.
my good friend. Yes, we salute Jean-Luc Audin. And I also salute the gentlemen from Russia that make uh, Persian meals, the conical shape, authentic, proper Persian meals, like Kashi Azad makes, in Russia from Siberian pine. And we're talking about wood, like they said, wood that can withstand the harsh Russian winters, ice and snow. I salute them too. Not only because of the authenticity of the proper shape of the clubs they make and, uh, and the quality of the wood they use, but the very reasonable price that, that they charge for their, uh, let's say, 20 pound, which I think is, was it 10 kilograms? 20 pound, I could be wrong, Persian meals made of Russian pine trees, very reasonably priced, and, and I wish, you know, I would love to order a pair from them, when you think about it. Honesty and integrity of those Russian gentlemen, I salute them also, I just wish I knew the name of the company, but, you know, we can, we can, we can get them to message us. Yeah, I mean, the poor guy flew all the way back to Sydney, Australia. He could have gotten booked. Kashi Azad could have went on tour. How many times did I say this? How many times did I rant? Oh, Jeff, por favor, por some more. I, 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 you're going too fast. I didn't read the other one. I, I can't like bing, 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 bing. I can't do that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the talk show, so I have, I have, to, I have to give monologues. And then I, I read what you said. 10 kilograms equals 22 pounds. In, uh, converting metric to, to American pounds. Thank you very much, Jeff Sambello. I really totally missed the other paragraph. Because I'm looking at the camera. Um, yeah, I mean, I try to tell that to like uh, Damian Owens. Because, like, when we do a show, it's like, bing, 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 bop, 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 bop. You know, I mean, if I'm a host and I'm conducting a show, I have to talk to the, to the viewers out there in cyberspace. I have to do monologues. I have to do rants. You know, I can't, my eyeballs can't be, like, straight. Oh, oh. You know, I can't, like, stop myself in the middle of a sentence and read a paragraph and then continue to finish one sentence. I have to do a paragraph of me making my point, and then my eyeballs go down, and I read the commentary by a co-host like you, or the general public that might be out there, you know, watching the video. It's got to be structured. Otherwise, you know, Otherwise, you have a bunch of a bunch of hicks, man, a bunch of a bunch of rednecks, a bunch of ham and eggers doing amateur video. Oh, that! Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Jeff Sambella brought up the fact that one of the great greatest circular torque training tools in existence and the best bang for the buck has to be the old-fashioned iron 16-pound iron block with long hickory handle, uh, fence post maul hammer. It's like a sledgehammer. In the United States, the motherfuckers jacked up the price to over $80 if you want the original one with the hickory handle, which, by the way, you'll have the best gripping ability on that natural wood. Okay, in Canada, uh, it costs 27 U.S. dollars? 27? Oh, I thought it was 22. All right, 27 is good. 27 dollars, so you got a long hickory handle, which means the torque is pretty good. 
and you have a 16 pound block of iron on the end, which means maximum torque. When you swing that, it's going to be much more challenging than a steel mace. Now, another great aspect of having a long wooden handle is you can choke up if you're a beginner and the 16 pound uh, fence post a mall hammer not the one with the artificial handle that they sell in the United States. Fuck them. The original one with the hickory handle. If you're a beginner just learning circular training and you, you don't want to get hurt because you, if you don't do it properly and conservatively, you will fuck your shoulders up. I mean, there, there, is, a, there is definitely a wrong way to learn circular training. Uh, you know, don't underestimate these tools. Anyway, if you're a beginner, you can choke up on a long wooden handle. Okay? And then, as you go back down, because your hands are not going to slide on a, wo on, on a wooden handle. That's the beauty of it. You, you come down in increments, and now the torque gets greater and greater and greater and greater and greater and greater. And greater. Okay. Jeff Sambello says, who actually, actually, Jeff Sambello's training program is the best in the world. This man can technically, right now, get booked to do a seminar with his system. Because this man not only has the best system, but he's a motivator. He's like, he's like a motivational speaker. Not like Pinocchio in the Geico commercial. Everyone in this room has untapped potential. You have untapped potential. No, you have untapped potential. No, 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 no. He's a real motivational speaker. And he has, he took the training system of Kushti from the area of India called Punjabi, Punjabi Kushti, the Akaras of Varanasi, India, and the Zirkanes of Iran, of Persia. The only thing is, Jeff has to start practicing on using two meals at the same time. Then I would say he's got the Zirkane down pat. Three planes of motion are the sagittal, the frontal, and the transverse planes. Now, do you learn this with the Mr. Mace Man or the Kelly Calzone uh, seminars? No. You, you learn them with the great Daniel Ramsey of uh, New Breed Fitness because he has a martial arts background. You see, people that give a shit about their students, that pay, that pay hard-earned money, that, that spend a lot of money to go to your workshops, they should learn not only the history of, of uh, circular torque training or alternative old-school training, the history and the science of kinesiology. They should learn that as well. Not a bunch of bullshit. Look at me, I'm doing the grave digger. Look at me, I'm doing the, the alternate uh, ballistic uh, uh, curl with the mace. Woo! Let me tell you a few stories. I'll make you laugh. Let me tell you... Let me give you expensive wallpaper called a certificate that you can, like, put on your bathroom wall while you're taking a shit. You know? Uh, yes. Now, this is education. Even though he's a very humble man, Jeff Sambello is a humble man, what he knows now, and with, his, and with the motivation that he learned from uh, the uh, former Navy SEALs, uh, Mr. Mr., Mr. Groggins, Mr. Goggins, uh, uh, I, I don't know his name, anyway, New breed mace belt program. No, no, don't use the word mace belt as a registered trademark. Uh, new breed steel mace program of Lodi, New Jersey is the best 
a value and most comprehensive circular torque training available. The great martial art expert, a very kind, very generous, a very humble man, Mr. Daniel Ramsey, the proprietor of the business on Garibaldi Avenue in Lodi, New Jersey, my hometown, even though I live in Edgewater, New Jersey now. Lodi is my hometown. Uh, and uh, you're definitely going to get a workshop that is money well spent because you cannot teach everything in one seminar. It has to be at least a few days. It has to be separated into workshops for you to get your money's worth and for you to learn everything that you need to learn. Proper execution of the exercise, safe exercising, right? The history of what you're doing, the history of the exercise tool, the people that uh, that uh, uh, made it famous, uh, popularized it in the Western Hemisphere. You need to learn all of these things, and it can't be done in one seminar, you know. And and then have the person rush back home at, at, at taking a four a.m. flight at Newark Liberty Airport. Cannot wait until the Northeast Regionals for the Vintage Strength Games in 2020. That, that's this spring, Jeff Sambell? I can't wait until you go there and take some quality video and photographs of you in action. Make sure you polish your head good. Get wax like Telly Savalas and make it real shiny. So, so you look, you, you look b your best, and you got your, your royal blue spandex training gear on. Now, now Jeff Sambella uh, taught me something uh, over the phone privately. He told, he told me that. Not with the mace, not with clubs, but there seems to be an issue, unfortunately, with the kettlebell. The kettlebell um, swinging, uh, in vo I think in volume, I think it has to do with volume, high volume, I'm sorry, high volume kettlebell swinging causes pain in the shoulder joint. When you, because when you do high volume kettlebell swinging, you, you, you have to beat the clock. You're watching the clock and you have to do so many repetitions in, what is it, four minutes? Something like that? And it's, in order to do that, it's done ballistically and it, it, it causes pain. Discuss how the great Gama trained with the Hahnemann mace. The great Gama did many ancient uh, Kushti exercises and Akara exercises. The great Gama uh, was a Kushti wrestler who was only five foot seven inches tall but he weighed 275 pounds of solid muscle. The man retired undefeated like Rocky Marciano and I repeat he retired undefeated. Now just picture 275 pound on a 5 foot 7 inch frame and he did not have uh, you know uh, any uh, Olympic barbells and heavy dumbbells and high tech machines uh, or designer equipment that costs a lot of money like the infamous King's Scepter dildo that Mr. Maceman uh, got for free and did a video. I can't get enough of my girl, my gal. I can't get enough of my gal. The, the great Hanuman of Punjabi did not have anything hoity-toity or elitist or expensive. Not at all. He had the clay dirt that he stood on barefooted, did all his exercises on that clay dirt, 
climb that rope, did high volume Hindu squats, Hindu push-ups. He swung the gata, okay? And he was able to put on that much muscle on a five foot seven inch frame, okay? Yes, the great Hanuman Mace. Hanuman, the, uh, the Hindu god of power and strength, the great Hanuman, who I will salute right now and, and give pay homage to all the Hindu people in India uh, who work out in the Akaras, in Varanasi, India, by the holy Ganges River. I pay homage to the great Hanuman. Who Mr. Mace Man said, I don't, to, a, to an Indian gentleman, I do not care about your monkey god. I am a personal witness to this statement. I do not care about your monkey god. Are you, are you people out there familiar with infomercials? Are you familiar with carnival snake oil hucksters? People that just want to take your money. You ever you ever notice in you ever notice in all the all the cartoons the villains always had a skinny pencil thin mustache. Commodore Jeff Sambello. You ever notice that? Like Snidely Whiplash. Remember him? Excuse me. So, <clears throat> getting back to corporate fascist censorship by social media pencil neck geek CEOs. Let me tell you something. If you're easily offended, all you have to do is go to another web page, change the channel, don't watch the program, don't read the commentary if you're that offended. Don't censor someone and take away their First Amendment rights. You spineless, sniveling, snot-nosed, little cowards, you, you pussies, you crybabies that have to go cry to the social media company. You deserve the shillelagh right across the skull. Famous, uh, Jeff Sambello says, famous circulator coach, circular talk training coach said that young people do not train with ancient tools but prefer machines. You know, this is a sad truth. The younger generation uh, men, young men in India and in Iran, uh, as well as the, the largest Iranian community outside of Iran, which happens to be in Los Angeles, California, unfortunately, prefer to go to modern gyms, modern, clean gyms, indoors, work out indoors, in the central air conditioning, with fancy equipment. They, they do not care about the tradition of training in the Akara or the Zirkane. They prefer to go to modern gyms. Even the great... Um, Richard Army McGuire told me this on the telephone. And they are abandoning the traditions. Uh, and, un, and I hate to say it, the punks are looking for shortcuts by cheating, using anabolic steroids, has become epidemic among these young people like in India, and just like the punks in the United States, the young punks that want a shortcut, they want to cheat. If they had the opportunity to cheat on a college exam, they would do it. You're looking at a, a generation that lacks respect and integrity. They're not like us. They're not old school. They don't have any manners. If you hold the door open for them, they won't say thank you. They don't appreciate what you do for them. They have no respect for the forefathers that paved the way for them. They want shortcuts. 
Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I will take a little intermission, which I, I didn't get a chance because when I did the show, a, cer a certain friend of mine uh, continued to talk during my juice harp playing. Excuse me. Put down the shillelagh. Uh, Jeff Sambello, how is the overall quality of this Facebook live stream talk show going so far? Is everything going okay? I mean, am I, is the video quality good? How is the audio quality of what's going on? So the audio, the audio and video quality is not that great? All right. I was going to do this, you know. Uh, okay, I will discuss the benefits of power bands. The um, resistance power bands. Thank you, sir. Jeff Sambello says the live show is going very well. And also in video and audio, audio quality as well as content. Now, uh, resistance power bands, the advantage that they have over weights, traditional weights, barbells, dumbbells, machines, is that, you know, when you bring a barbell or dumbbell to the top sec section of an exercise, let's say it's the bicep curl. All right. Now, as soon as you approach the top part of the exercise with the weight, tension is immediately coming off of the biceps or any muscle. It could be the triceps, the chest, the shoulders, whatever. When you, when you reach the top, the tension disappears. But with the resistance power band, the tension never is depleted. Um, someone is trying to interrupt me while I'm on the air. I, I, don't, I really don't like that. Uh, they know I'm on the air. Um, okay, when you're using a resistance power band, um, the tension never releases, even if, if you're at the top portion of an exercise. It never releases, okay, which means you have constant and steady tension throughout the full range of motion. Okay, another good thing about the power band, the resistance power band, you know how when you're using weights, when you go to momentary muscle failure, you put the weight down and quite often people with knowledge would do drop sets or they would do the old York heavy and light system, uh, which means they will grasp a weight about 30% lighter without resting, usually within 15 seconds. The same thing with a drop set. The heavy and light system from the York Barbell Company um, that Bob Hoffman used to talk about, the late great um, U.S. Olympic weightlifting coach, Bob Hoffman used to talk about the heavy and light system being one of the best systems. It's a drop set. Now, with resistance bands, you can immediately do a drop set faster than with weights. Because all you have to do is move closer to the source point um, where the power band is attached. So if you have a power band attached to a, um, a steel bar or a fence post or I use my old-fashioned radiator, that's the source point where you use a lark knot, L L-A-R-K um, and um, that's the, the, the origin of where the power band is attached. Or if you're standing on a power band and you want to increase or decrease 
the tension. You simply, the more you stretch a power, power band, the greater the tension. The less you stretch a power band, which means you can bring your feet closer together instead of shoulder width apart. You can bring your feet closer together, which is standing on the power band. You're releasing, you're lowering the resistance by bringing your feet closer together. While your feet are going farther apart, you're increasing the resistance. Why? Because you're shortening the length of the power band. The same thing as if you have the power band tied to, let's say, a fence post with a lock knot. You move to do a drop set. To, you, well, first you start off by stepping away from the fence post. So now the power band is stretching. Now you have maximum resistance. You do the exercise. The tension is never being released. You go to failure until you can't do another repetition. Now you step closer to that fence post. Now, now the power band is reducing in length. So therefore, the resistance is progressively getting lower and lower and lower. But instead of doing it within 15 seconds, like with the dumbbell, you got to put the dumbbells down. Then you have to go over and hopefully you have it in front of you. Then you have to pick up a lighter pair of dumbbells. See, that takes time. But with the power band, you do it quick because you can shorten and lengthen the resistance power band within seconds. That's the power band in a nutshell, the resistance power band. The, in my opinion, the Persian half moon push-up, um, whether it be on a pair of yoga blocks, yoga blocks or a pair of bricks or a shenna board is one of, if not the most challenging of all body weight exercises, calisthenic exercises. It is probably the most demanding. It, no, it is the most demanding of all the push-up varieties. And it is one of the most demanding of all body weight calisthenic related exercises. And uh, Steve Maxwell does an outstanding job on YouTube demonstrating the proper form of how, how to do a Persian half moon push up. Look it up, um, it's great. Okay. Uh, someone is still trying to interrupt me while I'm on the air. Uh, hey, when, when old James P. Madonna is doing something that's important to him, he doesn't take a backseat to any, anybody. Nobody else is more important, you know, except the Lord. So, I'm not going to cut short anything when I'm on the air. And that's what I was trying to explain to the other gentleman that I was doing the show with the other, the other night. You know, when, I, when I'm doing something, it's my time. And it has to be done properly. Um, anyway, it's time for the old halftime intermission of the Juice Heart.
Now, the individual that keeps interrupting my live show with his personal situation, uh, despite what I'm saying, uh, continues to do so because there are, I hate to say it, and I don't care if pe people get mad at me, there are, there are individuals, and I know, I knew and know several, that are so narcissistic, perhaps egomaniacal, but basically so selfish that when they, when they talk to you, they don't, they don't hold a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. It's not, it's not a give and take thing. They talk at you. They don't really listen to what you're saying. They don't really focus on what you're saying. They don't really care about what you're saying, but they fucking go on and on and on and on and on because everything is all about fucking them. Now, am I going to stop the live show because somebody keeps on interrupting me? No, I'm not going to stop the fucking live show. I wish people get it through their fucking thick heads and stop being fucking selfish. It's really pissing me off how people are doing that. They see I'm going live and they keep on fucking going on and on and on and on and on and on and on about themselves and what's, what's going on in their lives. Anyway, Jeff Zambello, for a home gym, Jeff Zambello says, for a home gym, and, and he's still going on, for a home gym, where can interlocking exercise mats be procured? Well, you can pay top dollar in a sporting goods store. Or you can go to um, the toy department um, and buy the um, same interlocking mats sold for little toddlers, you know, young children that play on the floor uh, for a fraction of the cost of what they are at a sporting goods store.